Although this video is about the Corporate Transparency Act, the new federal law that requires companies to report information to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network about the owners of their business. In this video, I'll tell you who needs to report, what they have to report, when they have to report, what the penalties are for not reporting, and where that information goes. So let's get right into it. Really, the purpose here is purportedly to fight financial crime and money laundering. That's why everything will be submitted to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network on this website. We're talking about beneficial ownership information. And you can see filed beginning January 1st, 2024. So they more or less have everything ready to accept. Let's dig right into the act. Uh, the act is about 10 pages. We're gonna skip the definitions and come back to them. Everything really starts here in B. Each reporting company shall submit to FinCEN a report that contains the information described in paragraph two. We'll talk about the information in paragraph two. Second, first, everything that hinges on the definition of reporting company. So let's scroll back up here. Reporting company is definition number 11. It starts here and it carries on for about two pages. Very, very broad, okay? Read this with me. Reporting company means a corporation, LLC, or other entity that is created by the filing of a document with the Secretary of State, Indian tribe, or foreign jurisdiction, okay? So basically everybody under the sun, any LLC, corporation, certain partnerships, limited partnerships, et cetera, anything coming in from overseas are all gonna have to report if they're basically doing any business in the USA, except if you meet one of these 24 exceptions, you see how they wrote write this, reporting company does include anything like this, but does not include, and then they got 24 exceptions that they go through, okay? So look, rather than going through all of those one by one, I broke down those 24 exceptions into a few categories that I wanna show you. I hope you find this a little more digestible. The first 18 exceptions to what a reporting company is, are these ones. They're more or less companies that the SEC already knows about. If you issue securities, banks, credit unions, broker dealers, clearing houses, okay, any or anybody else registered with the SEC, investment companies, investment advisors, it goes on and on, okay. Public utilities are also um, exempt as are government entities, okay. So the idea here is, as far as I can tell, basically if the SEC already knows about you, you don't have to report again. The second category is nonprofits. Nonprofits, you can't really receive investment in them, right? You can't issue securities really in a nonprofit. So it makes sense that the SEC, or sorry, FinCEN would not be concerned with them. Miscellaneous, I'll talk about first before going back to 21. Um, subsidiaries don't have to report. If there's no business or no assets in the business in the LLC, then you don't have to report. Or if they're exempted by the Treasury or Homeland Security for some reason. And then the strangest exemption at all is grown, basically I'm calling them grown companies. They really don't fit any of the other 24 exemptions. Uh, any company that has 20 or more full-time employees and 5 million or more in gross sales as according to their tax return and has a U.S. office don't have to report. And I'm thinking, you're sitting here thinking like, why would they exempt those ones? Well, I think because those are the companies that probably don't need investment. They don't need to launder money. We're not really concerned with taking investment into existing companies that are successful. We're worried about people hiding money in LLCs and corporations that have no visibility to the public and through which the uh, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network basically can't track down the owners. So they know money's coming in and out, but maybe they can't pin somebody down. I think that's kind of what they're getting at here. But I thought it was kind of strange that they arbitrarily just decided 20 or more employees, 5 million or more in gross in an office in the US, okay, that's where we're gonna draw the line and those companies are, ex are exempt. So anybody less than that, I mean, that's gonna be most entrepreneurs. If you are a graphic designer or an accountant or a business attorney, even me, even though in California, you cannot own a part of my law, law corporation, unless you are a licensed attorney, I still have to report, right? It's kind of strange. Uh, I think there are a few that they left out, but generally speaking, that's how they're looking at it. Okay, so these are the companies that are exempt from the definition of reporting company. You do not have to report if you fit one of these exceptions. You should look at the fine print here much closer at these specific Roman numerals, match them up to see if you fit one of these because there's a bunch of nuance there that I don't want to get into. 
Um, now let's talk about what information you will have to report. Again, a reporting company will submit to FinCEN a report that contains the information described in paragraph two. So where's paragraph two? Well, it's right here, okay? Here's what it says. Basically, names, date of birth, address, and identification number, right? But it only has to do with beneficial owners. We'll get to that definition next. Let's read it real quick. So basically, the report delivered under paragraph one shall identify each beneficial owner of the company and each applicant with respect to that reporting company by their full legal name, their date of birth, their current address, and their unique identifying number, which for our purposes is a tax ID or social security number. Now let's look at the definition of beneficial owner because those are the only ones we're concerned with. Scrolling up to the top, we see that it's actually pretty simple. The term beneficial owner means with respect to an entity, an individual who exercises substantial control over the entity or owns or controls not less than 25% of the ownership interest, right? So the first one is really con contemplating directors or officers that are going to control the company. But if not, then we're really worried about people who own 25% or more. So if you're going to commit a financial crime, you better have at least four other co-conspirators and you all got to own 20% of the company or less. That way you don't have, uh, you don't meet that threshold and maybe you don't have to report, okay? There are some exceptions here for minors, people who are maybe acting on behalf of a trust, etc. but I'm really not concerned with those. So pretty much everybody's going to have to report who owns more than 25% of the company or has control over it. Okay, now let's talk about when you have to report, okay? Fact or fiction, all companies have to report within a month or so of January 1st, 2024. Fiction, existing companies have until 2025 to report. So this is good news. If your company was formed before 2024, then you have an extra year. So no need to stress over the holidays about getting your ownership reporting in. Perfect thing to procrastinate into the new year. This is a 2024 problem for existing business owners. Don't worry about it. You got time to figure it out. But if you are starting a new company in 2024 or later, you basically have to report right away anybody who has control over the company or owns more than 25%. Again, a beneficial owner. Okay, so that's when you have to report. Now let's talk about what the penalties are if you say, no, what if I don't feel like it? I'm not giving you my information about the ownership of my company. Screw you. Well, here's let, let's see what the code says. The code says that there's criminal and civil penalties. So any person who violates the reporting requirements shall be liable to the United States of a civil penalty not more than $500 per day that the violation continues, okay? So that's a pretty stiff penalty. That's gonna catch up pretty quick. So it's important for all you small entrepreneurs to pay attention to this and just do your reporting. Although the fine will be capped at not more than $10,000 or imprisonment for two years. So one thing I thought about this is like, look, if you're really trying to launder money, maybe it's worth it to just you know, eat $500 a day for 20 days and just never file. But if that were the case, you could still be imprisoned. The penalties also say that it's unlawful for somebody to use the information that they obtain without authorization. So the penalty is similar. So $500 for each day that the violation continues and shall be fined not more than $250,000 or imprisoned not more than five years. So the penalties for unauthorized violation or use are pretty darn steep too. So at least there are some teeth to the threat um, and the promise that this information is all gonna be kept within FinCEN. The next thing we've got to talk about, though, is where does this information go once FinCEN has it? Up here, it says that FinCEN may disclose beneficial ownership information reported to law. Basically, law enforcement is what they're looking at. If we scroll down a little bit more, a request from a federal agency on behalf of a law enforcement agency, prosecutor, judge, judge of another country, including a foreign central authority. So this is gonna spread overseas if anybody else is trying to stop financial crimes also. It can also be disclosed by a finan to a financial institution subject to customer due diligence requirements, which kind of makes sense. I'm fine with that. One thing that's important to point out is that in the next page, it says very specifically that beneficial ownership information shall be accessible for inspection to the Department of Treasury. So if you had any hope that the IRS was gonna be left out of it, you are sorely mistaken. I think that that's probably where a lot of this information is going to be 
disclosed and there are procedures for which these agencies and law enforcement and financial institutions have to go through to submit a request to FinCEN for that information. So there is a procedure there, but I'm not exactly thrilled with the scope of this. It seems to me it's going to get pretty leaky. A few final notes before we wrap this up. Uh, first of all, if you make a mistake, you got 90 days to fix it. Um, there is a safe harbor here, um, so that will exempt you from the penalties. A little bit for the rub, they talk about the regulations and what the Secretary of the Treasury will do. It says, you know, we'll prescribe procedures, et cetera, about the reports. And in promulgating those regulations, they will ensure that the beneficial ownership information reported to FinCEN is accurate, complete, and, quote, highly useful. So that, at least we know that our trusty government is going to get us highly useful information. I have no idea what that means. And then the last thing I want to mention that I thought was a little strange is the director outreach clause here down in 491. It says, in promulgating the regulations, the director will reach out to members of the small business community to ensure efficiency and effectiveness of the process for the entities uh, subject to the requirement of this section. Uh, I don't really think they care. They can talk to the small business community all they want. They've already made up their mind and they're going to be uh, requiring information from everybody, even small little graphic designers, or if you are a maybe personal trainer, business attorney, anything, uh, SEO, anything you're doing, pretty much any LLC or corporation is going to have to submit this information. You might be thinking to yourself, why should I have to do it? I mean, I'm just a again, graphic designer, personal trainer, like I have no connection whatsoever to uh, financial crimes and, you know, illegal investing, etc. Okay, I understand that. But <clears throat> On paper, they don't know what's behind the name of the company that is filed with the Secretary of State. There's no way for them to keep track of everybody. So whatever your company name says, if it's Johnny's graphic design, as far as, as FinCEN's concerned, there could be all sorts of money being routed through that and they wouldn't know. So that's the reason that they're so over-encompassing. On paper, everything looks like it could be an entity through uh, some shell company through which his money is just laundered and, and rerouted. So if I may conclude with my thoughts on the act, I object to it because, you know, there's this illusion that if we go, if we just give a little bit more information to the government that, you know, stopping these crimes is just around the corner, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, right? And uh, people think, well, you know, they already set up the website. It'll be really easy for me to submit my name, date of birth, address, and, uh, you know, tax ID. That's not that much. It'll take me five seconds to do it. Yeah, but they're like, where does this end? Because next there maybe there'll be a filing fee or they're going to ask for more information or more frequent updates of information. Or maybe that beneficial owner per ownership percentage drops from 25% down to 20% or 15% or something. You know, it's just this thought that, oh, if we just keep giving them more and more and more information, our trusty, loyal, super efficient government is going to somehow just, you know, these problems are going to start to evaporate. Um, I'm not so sure about that. Um, but also I understand that, you know, if you want to stop financial crimes and money laundering, you have to have information like this and it will, you know, go away towards uh, preventing a lot of that. So, you know, I'm not sure if there's a really good way to do it, but, you know, the fact that all these private companies that were formed in under the understanding that their ownership information would remain private, you know, for example, that's why people like Delaware LLCs and Delaware corporations, the LLCs in, is especially because there's no any, there's nothing on file whatsoever with any Delaware Secretary of State saying who actually owns that company. Delaware corporations have to file an annual report, but even that's private and kind of behind, uh, you know, public access. So, um, you know, it, it, it really throws a dagger in the idea of public or private ownership. There are a lot of people who are going to probably object to this. Um, I am curious to see how they are going to uh, enforce this, even if you have the names of every single company through every single secretary of state everywhere um, and some of them don't report well it's clear that some that don't have operations or assets um, they're exempted from being a reporting company so how are you going to tell one from the other unless you already have you know some information on them so uh, I, I don't really know how they're going to enforce it and make and track everybody down um, I'm not a big fan of this uh, to begin with because I'm not sure that the government's can use the information 
uh, effectively. But at least we know that if you are an existing company, you got an extra year uh, to report. So my advice would probably be to don't report until you have to. I won't be uh, sending mine in until December of 24, uh, you know, in advance of the January 1st, 25 deadline because I'm an uh, existing company. If you have any questions about this, please reach out and please remember that, you know, this is a very loose summary of it. You know, those exceptions for uh, reporting companies uh, have a lot more detail in them than, than my Excel spreadsheet I, I showed you um, this one. You know, there's a lot more detail in it there. So be sure to review your own fine print. And if you need help reviewing it, please reach out. My DMs are open. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks.